Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Lucid with another game of Dominions 4. We're hopping into Garden of Good and Evil. It's turn 31, and we're going to play this game. Uh, I have not done this turn before, so you'll get to see all of the painful micro that is M.A. Airmore. But last episode was a bit boring. This episode, we got a lot of fights, so we're only going to get through one turn. Let's check diplomacy first. So a message from Agartha. We are here to learn and to rule, not to be ruled. We haven't seen education, nor gems to raise our past ones. Just words of disciple. Who is he? Is he your love, long lost lover? Does that make you so angry? So he's smack talking me. Asphodel. Hello, Undead Ones. The news that I bring is that the tribes of Machaka and the underground cowards are slowly being converted into Undead Carrion, Forests of Asphodel. So he said that he has basically warred Agartha and Machaka, which is good because Machaka is basically effed. So <clears throat> if Asphodel and Aramor, I mean, and Scalaria, are warring people, you know, Scalaria is only going to go after Nazca or Ryla, and that's going to be really good for me. Because um, it's it's going to take a lot of pressure off of myself. Ryla sends a message. We'll fight you to the last dead thing that crawls his ground to the dust. But we still can offer you to enter the bag of wine into our glorious lottery as per the other messages. Alternatively, we can pay one draw of the lottery in exchange for the bag of wine. Die, die, die. God of the Sea and Fickle Rewards, said Yig. Uh, okay. And then a message from uh, from Ryla. He had said last turn there was this lottery where you send in a gem. And each gem gives you a lottery ticket and then based on a magic die you get something back. I don't really know how it works, but I'm not going to play that game. Anyway, somebody won something and it was a mistletoe garland. So, mistletoe garlands are okay. Um... Actually, I, I can't remember if that's the mistletoe boot. I mean, if that's the uh, the nature booster. That would be really cool if it was. I don't know why he would give that away. Um, it may be the head thing, too, that gives you luck. I can't totally remember. So, let's look. We cast three sight-searching spells. We found one sight, so let's check it out. Uh, I cast Augury, the fire sight search, on the throne province. And we found an F2 sight, so that's really good. So, this sight alone gives F5 once I claim this throne. If we take a look at my gem income, right, I've got seven fire gems about to be nine. That is huge. That's a ton. I mean, that's a lot even if I convert them into death gems. It's like two death gems just from fire conversion. So that's really good. And we found a magic site. Enchanted pyre. Oh crap, another fire gem. So we've got a ton of fire, so we'll have to figure out how to use it. Um, I've got decent access to fire with these guys. I can form Forge a Fire Booster with this guy at F3. I mean, when I get Construction 6, which probably won't happen, but um, not totally sure what I'm going to do. Maybe there's some low level fire dudes I can get here. Scorpion Beast, I could definitely do that. Um, not sure if that's what I want. Fire Ants, I cannot cast that. Flame Drakes, I could do those. Flame Jelly. Uh, I could probably do this too. So, there's definitely some reasons to go up Conjuration to spend Fire Gems. Uh, but my dudes, I probably want Researching instead. And with my high Fire Income, I'll need to find something that's really Mage Efficient for that to make sense for me. Um, got another one of these dudes too. So, Research is hopping. If I got everybody Researching, I'm up to 150, so that's really good. I'm not, because I'm going to turn people to doing other things. Okay, so that's our sights. Oh, check this out. My god's here. Golgoth, god of Emor, Ermor, master of evil, king of decay, master of wildlife, king knowing the waters has broken free. Rejoice. That's what I'm saying. Let's check out this dude. This my god. Right? Water 9, Death 9, N9, B9, and he's immortal. Super sweet. And he's invulnerable. 
Uh, he's really hard to get around. Really, the only way for me to move him is sticking in paths. Um, not sure I want to. Ideally, he can get some globals up, like I'm going to cast Burden of Time, so he'll be casting that. Uh, what else? We don't have any nature gems. I probably should start nature site searching just so I could potentially put up na um, nature globals or something like that. Water nine's really good. Blood nine's good. Uh, can't really use blood. Water, I don't really have any paths for. If I get lucky, I can. Uh, one of these guys will come out with with water one. So I can try that, but uh, yeah, probably not gonna have a lot of those gems. Since I didn't roll any at the start, uh, the other way to get water is Spectres can get water, but I have to get up Conjuration pretty freaking high. That would be good. The other thing I can do is he can cast... Um, well, Nyad, that'll get me into nature. And... Uh, where is it? Streams from Hades. This is a really good dude. Um, well, good for other nations. Not really good for me. Um, but Water Death gives you Stiggy and Rain, which is really good. I won't be casting it, but anyway, if I get Conjuration up that high, which could happen really late game, I can I can do that. Okay, so a ton of battles. Um, we're going to go through them real quick, and then after I've gone through just the highlights, uh, we'll go and watch some of them. Okay, so this is Ryla's big army. He moved. I was going to fight him, but I decided to dodge, which I think is good. And I can kind of see his setup now. Okay, uh, Star Spawn. This guy died against PD. We're gonna have to see how that happened. That's really funny. Actually, we'll watch that now. So you can see he uh, he was attacking a coastal province with one dude, thinking, oh, this one dude can take one PD. And we look at it. Okay, he's killing PD with Mind Burn. He's attacking more PD with Mind Burn. Right, so you can see my dude's paralyzed. Right, paralyzed, but not getting killed. And that's a lot of mind burn. And he's hurting him, still 7 HP. Right? Does not kill him. I got so lucky here. Right, and then we come up and fight. Uh, he's got a life drain attack, but that doesn't do any life drain versus undead. You can see he didn't heal any. Right, and then I smack him again. Right, smack him again. And smack him again, and he's dead. That was a capital-only mage, I think. Um, so that's really good. I got really lucky there. Um, but that's also why you probably should have sent him in with, like, some dudes. This is a total win for me. This is a bo uh, battle against Nazca. So this is our big fight. We'll definitely watch this. But if you if you look at it, it looks like I lost a lot. Um, but he lost almost all of his mages. Uh, they almost all died. In addition... I lost about 40% of my knights, and I lost about 30% of my lictors. So, really, I lost, in terms of real power, I don't know, maybe 50%, and he lost probably closer to 80%. It's really hard to see, because, uh, like, the, the Huron Priest, when he dies, he gets mummified, and uh, even if he dies, he's going to pop back up somewhere. So... We'll, we'll double check uh, as we watch that battle, but I, I'm pretty sure he lost more majors uh, than it's showing. Oh, guess what else? He lost this dude. This, uh, we'll see later in the battle, but this was his prophet, so it was an H4. And I don't think he had... You can see he got a white mage. I, I don't know where that came from, but um, maybe it was one of the Hurin priests or something like that. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, but he lost almost all his troops. Good stuff. Alright. Here, we killed this force. He had another little raiding force that got freaking wrecked. Um, and this was one of my battles inside the fort, where I took the fort from Bandar Log. So that's really good. This is my first fort that I've conquered from an enemy. I have an event in Airmore, I get more misfortune, which doesn't matter, and then heat has gone up, which is, all things considered, good for me. But not very good. Okay. Oh. If I make this guy research, look. 70 freaking research. That is huge, right? That alone is going to help me power up, uh, I mean, it essentially, 
once I have three of these guys doing something else, which I definitely will have, right? These guys defend. I've got 120 research. When I make Golgoth research, uh, that jumps up to 196. So it's about 70% more research. It's going to make things go a lot faster. It's a really big deal. And I didn't actually factor this in when I was thinking about Burden of Time. So, if we look at it, um, I've got 40 death gems, right? Um, you know, let's pull all these things back off. I'll have to remember to put them on at the end of a turn. But, yeah, I've got 40 death gems, and I'm going to have this researched in three turns now. So I will have, given my death income, I'll have another 60. So I'll have a hundred, so I'll be able to overcast it with uh, it costs I think 70, yeah. So I'll overcast it with 30. Um, there's a strong likelihood that with 30 um, they will fail the first time they try to dispel it. Uh, but within probably 10 turns I'll have almost like 250 or something, probably death gems, after that. And then I'm going to recast it with over 100. And they'll almost certainly waste another dispel on the second more strong one. Uh, and they won't be able to get it down. They'll probably just give up. Uh, so that's the plan. They Basically, the whole board is going to have to, the whole game, they're going to have to send an alchemized gems, do all sorts of things to try to get this thing down. It's going to be really, really hard for them. So this is really good. If you didn't get any research dudes, which is definitely possible if you're unlucky, then it's a godsend when your god comes. So let's check out the rest of the, the battles. Okay, we lost that. Okay, we've gone through all the battles. So this is the big one. This is the battle with Nazca. Now let's take a look at all these dudes. So this is my army. Here's his. Um, we're about equally matched in terms of number. He's obviously got way more mage support. We're going to look around and see who is twice born. So this dude has a anti-magic amulet, which I would like to take from him. You can see he's getting a lot of his anti-magic stuff so that uh, he's not hurt by blood vengeance. This is also a... Uh, uh, a hero, so he, or he's in the Hall of Fame, so he'll be able to cast Ritual of Rebirth on him and pull him back, which is really good for him because he's H4. Um, I'm looking here. I'm gonna put the speed up. You'll just see he's banishing a lot of my dudes. Okay, this is the dude with Twice Born. I think he's the only one with Twice Born. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's one twice-born dude. I've seen this battle before, but I don't really remember what happened to all the mages. So if you look, tons of banishment comes down, dust to dust. And every time he does a volley, look back here at his mages and see what happens. Because they're going to slowly get picked off. Like, here's all the dust to dust dudes. He also put up anti-magic. We'll go ahead and show you that. So magic bonus four. Um, oh wait, yeah, that's from anti-magic. Okay, and you can see the archers are making pretty good work of my with flaming arrows. They're really destroying a lot of my my long dead. But the real purpose of the long dead is just to soak up a bunch of that stuff, so it's not all direct to the main dudes. Okay, and you can see some of my attack rear dudes have made it to the back, which is really, really useful. So they will be prioritized, I think, by enemy AI. In terms of, um, of kind of firepower, these guys are weakening now. Their fatigue's ramped up, so they're going to still be attacking with spells, but uh, they're through a lot of it. But Dust to Dust is a really, really strong spell. Um, I believe that you basically can't block it. I think it's armor negating damage that is not negated by magic resistance. So that's a really big deal. Um, but I just killed their troops so fast that even though they're raining down all this stuff, 
um, it's gonna n not be good for them. I mean, look how much progress I make every turn. That's that's the value of the water bless, right? Because a lot of times you might want to go N9, D9, D9, uh, and then your troops are really tanky. But once they get the magic resistance, they're gonna be able to kind of counter you. Um, with the water bless, you just go through things so much faster. Okay, so you can see we killed some of the Hurin priests, right? We're gonna kill more. Watch this time, they're probably all gonna die. And yep, they're all dead. So even though in the battle it didn't look like I killed that many of them, uh, yeah, a lot of them died. Okay, the Koya made it out. We saw him, he was sitting right here. But I probably got a few more than I saw. So if we look at that battle again, um, these all died. The one that did die, it's showing as a plus one up here for the white mage, right? Which for him is good because this guy doesn't cost any maintenance. Um, but all these other guys got revived as less mobile, more expensive Hurin priests now, or as the Malakwis. And the the cost them's about doubled, so it's really high upkeep. Uh, but they do have the ability to reanimate undead chaff, which he's definitely going to be taking advantage of. Um, okay. So that is that. Um, for Let's take a look at the other big funny battles. So this is the funny expansion that he had, where he was trying to take my PD, which should have been possible, right? Because he's going to. Let's check him out. He's got two water gems. He's going to blow those. He's got a water elemental now, right? Okay, that's cool. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the water elemental should, like, probably could kill everything. Um, water elementals are good on land. They're even better underwater. They're way better underwater. But if we look at it, uh, the water elemental is wrecking my dudes, but this one knight is killing all of his chaff. And it just made him rout. So that was kind of a big deal. Um, so that was really funny. Uh, my income about 450, and that's because I'm keep I'm I'm losing some of this to Nazca. This actually is I think I don't know it's not a very good province. This is a good province too. I think this one was 40, 50 gold. So I do want to get that back. Um, let's check out his formation here. What he's bringing to the table because I'm gonna have to kill it. So it's a bunch of Lobo guards with this dude to cast. It looks like he's going to cast Paralyze, and he's going to spam Mind Blast. So I need to have a lot of dudes to soak up the Mind Blast. Fortunately, I have a boatload of them, and then they're just going to get absolutely murdered. Um, so he thinks this is a good army, because he just killed somebody with it. Um, hopefully, he thinks he can kill these guys. If he does, he will just be have his day ruined. Um, but we'll see. All right, what else? So let's watch this battle super quick. Uh, this is me busting through his fort. I just have a bunch of my knights at the front that are going to charge through the gates and kill these guys. There's really not too much to see. He casts Howl, he casts Earth Elemental, which really is just a waste of gems. So I can understand wanting to do it, maybe inflict some casualties, but he's not even anywhere close. Um, here I killed... I actually haven't seen this battle, but this was a, uh, a medium to small force of his, fighting a big force of mine. Um, yeah, they're going to get absolutely murdered. So, I'll take that. Okay, my attack rear, and I think they're just going to murk his commander. Check it out. I don't know if they go in here. And, let's see what happens next. One commander dead. Now these guys are on attackers, so they should run back and kill all these guys. Okay, now they're routed. And because they're behind them, they're just going to come up and absolutely crush them. And in case any of you didn't know, when you route, you get a big penalty to your stats. I think I, I don't think you get a strength penalty. Yeah. Okay, so that was big. Abandoned Laboratory, Glen of Verdant Greenery. I didn't check what I can recruit here. This is a barbarian province. 
So I lost this battle. This is uh, this was the most painful thing that happened this turn. Um, I have ghouls guarding this dude. Uh, what's gonna happen? We will see. You know, bad things. So I should have won this. This is a battle without a doubt. I should have won. Um, what happens though is you can see he's spamming mind burn. And what that means is he's gonna kill. This guy's pretty strong. He's blessed with all this. That'll really help against Mind Burn. Um, I'm probably gonna have to start giving my Archbishop's magic resistance items. Um, but these zombies are about to die. When they die, or they rout, see? When they rout, there's only one guy left. I don't have any lictors, is one of the main problems. And that was a huge amount of damage. It was 27. Um, so. Yeah, when he dies, all these guys just disintegrate. So I would have won this fight, uh, but bad things happened. Um, so here I've got a bunch of lictors and zombies. This this army actually could defend. Um, what I may do though is pull him down here or on top of this and move this guy up here. We'll see. The, the problem is I know Asphodel will border this, so this will open up a front with Asphodel, which I'm not super looking forward to. Um, okay, so I think those are the fun battles that happen this turn. Now we have to do strategy for next turn. Okay, there's a lot of dudes here. Um, not sure I want to siege it. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this anti-magic amulet to my H4 dude. Don't want him dying. Uh, these armies are way smaller than they were, so let's go ahead and consolidate some. Uh, okay. So this is a pretty small army now, and a lot of these guys are wounded. Like, if you hit W on top of your guys, it'll show you who's wounded. You can see over half of them are wounded. So. Things like limp and stuff, it, it does kind of mess up your battle formation. Disease doesn't matter for me. Um, so, I have to figure out what I'm going to do, and I'm not totally sure. I think... I, this is 50 income. I really want to take this out. I don't really have a strong enough group yet. Um... And really, I'm okay sitting here until Burden of Time comes up, which is only like three turns away. So, what can I do? I think actually what I do is I have smaller forces, and I prevent him from raiding. That's kind of what I'm thinking now. Um... So this is kind of what I'm thinking. I'm going to take him. I It's really unlikely he attacks again. If he does, I probably can leave more of these dudes. Um, something like this, that way my morale is not so bad on these guys. But I think this guy probably reanimates Lictors. Every time I move this guy, it's essentially killing two lictors. So if I have the option to keep him still, I'll probably do that. And then I'll just... He's definitely going to raid, right? And he's going to raid one of these two provinces. He might try this one. Which actually is a higher income province, so maybe this guy moves here. Tries to cut him off. Uh, unlikely he raids in this direction, since these are low income. Don't know if he's looking at that, but... Um... I mean, what I could do, should do, is probably take these guys, stick them on him, right, and uh, run up there, something like this. He's not going to raid here, so if he moves this army out, which he should, then I'll kill it, and then I'll kill this province, so there'll be no place for him to retreat into. I think he's going to attack here, but we're not sure. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this dude. We're going to take all the troops on him. 
we're going to take... This is the micro health. One thing that helps is if you double click on your dudes, uh, you select all of that type. So what you want to do is you want to keep your javelin throwers in a separate group from um, your non-javelin throwers. That way they use their javelin because their javelin is really good. Solus, of course, need to be on their own. Right? And so this is the micro. That's a lot of fun. Um, and then I have one more lictor up here. Okay, so that's my lictor, and this is my army. I think this is enough. Um, I'm going to have a lot more ghouls here, so I think if I bring this guy with all his ghouls, we'll be in good shape. Uh, if he attacks here, I'm going to set this guy to retreat. And... I don't think he will. I think he's going to try to take this, because he thinks this army is really good, because he just killed somebody with it. Uh, but he's going to get murdered. And he knows this is a weaker army. It's just ghouls. Um, but if we look at what is coming in, it's going to be these guys. It's going to be this guy. Um, how am I positioning all of these? And I'm going to have a huge amount of zombies. Which I do not want in a treat. I want an attack. And... It's probably better to go ahead and put these guys on dudes. And I think I want these guys on spells. So I'm going to spam that order down the tree. Normally you'd want them to retreat, but in this case I'm going to hold this province. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these guys down here. That way I can give them formations. Some of them I probably want to have stay at the back, that way I don't trigger an HP route, and I'm guaranteed there's going to be plenty of Mind Blast targets. So we're going to put these guys on Guard, commend guard Commander. Alright, we're going to put them all back here. Now what I would like to do is cut off his retreat too, so I'm going to look at how I can do that. And I'm not really worried about banishment spam very much here, so I'm not doing sparse line or anything like that. But this will be a big army, there's no way he can take it. In fact... I wish I could attack from this angle. Now, yeah, one thing I could do is I... Okay, I can't even do that. But... Okay. If I could have attacked through here, that would be good. Um, potentially. But now if he moves here, I'm just going to give him this two-income province, and we'll see what happens. Um, and then I'll have a big army here where I can go contest him. But... Uh, this guy's gonna sit around and patrol. I really normally it doesn't take this long for the event to trigger. Nothing's really happened having my dusk elder sit here, so that's unfortunate. Okay, what else do we have? We are shuffling more troops around. So I will show you this again. The trick: you click on one of them, you hit A, and it selects everything of that type, and it puts it up here. In this case, it's giving me only soulless, which I don't really want. It's kind of hard to filter out Solus. One thing you can do is you can select a range and then pull them in. But I haven't done that here. So, uh, what I'm going to do... Actually, I think that's okay. Um, I do want to make sure I get these sacred guys. Okay, I got them. So... There, I've gotten most all the normal troops. Um... What I may want to do is pull him up here. I'm building a big army. So let's go ahead and finish this army off. So this is a really big army. I've already filled it up. Uh, so we'll pull some of these guys out. Okay. 
Okay, so if we look at it, we're going to pull the rest of these guys in here. I think we've got all our lictors currently assigned. We're going to take... I'm going to go ahead and fill that up, fill this up. So I'm going to have to bring a sensor with me. Actually, my lictors I should probably put on this dude. I think I'm going to have to have two support guys because this troop is almost full. Especially when I put these guys down here. Okay, so this this is full. Um, we'll fill up the Mound King next. Okay, he's now full. Now we're going to fill up the sensor. So, we'll get all these guys. Okay. So now, when we put these guys all up here and these guys here, this is another big front line. And... We're going to need a bunch of zombies, too, because of who we are fighting. The zombies, though, I don't want to die. I'm going to have them all on Guard Commander. And these guys I'm going to pull in here. And I'm going to give them... Hopefully he can take all those. Yeah, okay. Oh, that really works works out well. So, if we look at it, I need to get these priests somewhere where they can be useful. Um, this is the slow micro, so this episode's going to be a little boring, but you'll get to see all the sausage being made. If you want to go ahead and quit now, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to defend here by probably assuming he's going to attack one of these two provinces, so that's a dice roll, and we're assuming he's not going to attack here. We're going to assume he attacks the throne. If he does, this army's going to die, but uh, some of his forces will be able to retreat. I can't cut off his retreat path. We are going to probably move down here, and then I assume he'll want to fight. I don't know what he's going to do. He, he'll, he might back up. It would be wise for him to back up. I'm going to send a huge army here. Um, so I'm probably going to do something like take... Um, probably take this with a really small force. I'll take this with this army, and then I'll send a big force here. And then I have a lot of flexibility what I do after that. You can see he has a lot of umbrals, which are, are good troops, but they're not going to be that good. So he's probably getting ready to attack me. I'll just let him do it. Um... I do need to make sure these guys are set up to retreat, which they are. Right, and I probably need these guys to retreat also. So, we're going to do all of these orders. This is why playing Airmore is hard. Because it takes a ton of micro. If you do hold one turn, then retreat, it'll let your undead dudes get off the field. Because once your last dude leaves they all will dissolve. Okay. We're trying to take this back. Troops that are staying here. One thing is if you're moving troops out, like I'm moving one army here, if you want to see who's left in that province, you hit Y, and that's only going to show you provinces that will be there next turn, or at the end of the turn. So, anyway, you can see what we're dealing with here. Okay, that's as good an army as any to sit behind. Do another one of these dudes. Always put one Mount King up. Uh, set all my dudes to reanimate ghouls. Uh, 
Uh, one of these guys actually is probably going to take a small army. A small army of ghouls. And he's going to attack. Okay. This hopefully can take that. I don't know how many... He probably doesn't have much PD here. It's a really safe province. It would be kind of a waste to put it there. But if he has enough, he could repel a really weak force. These guys, I think, would be able to kill whoever's there. But instead, I have this army. We don't really have enough dudes for him to come. So instead, it will just be these guys. That's my main force. And... I'm pretty happy with my formation here. I think these guys are sparse lines, so that's good. They're gonna go here. They're gonna actually absolutely wreck. Uh, I don't have a lot of zombies with them, however, so we will give them a good strong zombie contingent, maybe 50. And the job of these zombies is gonna be to not fight. So to sit here and guard this dude. And all will be good. We're actually gonna move them all the way to the very back, that way if they do banishment or something it'll be more likely to miss or out of range so this is an army that can definitely and without a doubt take that unless he moves some huge swath of reinforcements which I don't think he has one thing I'm looking to do now is I need to get my temples up I'm kinda done with forts for a little bit uh, my incomes kinda of shit I probably should not recruit this dude and let's check see make sure I'm not doing any more recruitment I don't think I am. So next turn, I'll definitely be able to put a temple up. This turn I might not be able to. Don't know where this army is going to move. That's like the big prediction. So here's, this is the big army that I'm building, or one of my many big armies. Um, and these guys are the, going to be my dudes who move. So if we look at it, I'd like to, I don't know if he can, no, he can't take it. Okay, this dude's full. So he's going to need a bunch more zombies, maybe like this many. And these guys are going to be on guard commander, and he's going to stay right here. Hold, hold, hold. And these guys are going to be on guard commander. Okay, perfect. So hopefully my zombies don't fight. Um probably need to script him. Otherwise, if you don't script him, it's very possible you only cast Protection of the Sepulchre, which you really don't want to do. Okay. In fact, I really can't have too many zombies here. The risk is some of my zombies route, and then, uh, then I'm in deep doo-doo. So... We've got a pretty good contingent here. So now the question is just anticipating his move. If we look at it, these guys are probably starving. So one thing he might say is, oh, I'm going to move here rather than going too deep. Um, but it's risky. What I probably want to do too is send a small force up to take some of these back. Which might be what I do here. Normally I don't like using zombies, but uh, if it means gold, I will trade zombies for gold. They're pretty bad fighters though, so... Okay, so these dudes are going to come up here. Now the risk is that he, well, he's probably going to attack me. I don't know if I really want to do that. They could go here. This province is safe. I'm not totally sure. So where is this dude going to go? He could try to attack me. That would be extremely unlikely. And actually, it looks like a bunch of these dudes died or something. 
Because this is... Is this the full force? Yeah, there's everybody. So if we look at this formation, huge communion party. Magic boost 3, so he's at H5. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. That is gonna hurt a lot. So... I don't think he's gonna try to sit on top of me, but we'll see. I think these guys go aggressive. But I could lose. How many is this? 28 zombies. I would kind of rather defend. I feel like he's gonna go here. But I, maybe he goes here. I think this is what I'll do. I don't think this is army. This army is big enough that he's gonna feel really bold. He's definitely not gonna sit on top of my fort. So he's gonna move here or here. Um, I'll have to figure it out. Well, we're at 40 minutes. It's way longer than I wanted to go. This kind of shows you what all is involved in actually doing a turn. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll catch you next time.